Happy Easter from the crayons. The crayons are getting ready for Easter. Yay, Easter! Yay! We're so excited! Chocolate! Yay! Red crayon decorates a circle. That is not an egg. Are you going to color an egg? Says purple crayon. Nope, says red crayon. I like the circle, and I'm gonna stay with it. Orange crayon decorates a square. Hey, that's not an egg, says purple crayon. No, but it's the color of the sun, and I like the color orange. I'm an orange crayon after all, says orange crayon. Yellow crayon decorates a triangle. That really isn't an egg, says purple crayon. No, but it's the color of the sun, and I'm yellow, and I love the sun, says yellow crayon. Esteban decorates a rectangle. That is definitely not an egg, says purple crayon. No, but my goodness, look how magnificent it is. This is a work of art. It belongs in a museum. I love it, says Esteban. White crayon decorates a star. Ugh, for the millionth time, that is not an egg. And plus, did you even color it? Yes, I colored it. Thank you very much. I spent all day coloring this, and I don't want to be insulted by you, purple crayon. Says white crayon. Blue crayon decorates a rhombus. I don't even know what to say at this point anymore. I'm just. Did none of you guys get the memo? Like it's Easter, not a shape contest. I know, I know, I know. It's not an egg, purple crayon. Do not lose your marbles. I've been working on this all day. Okay, this rhombus is huge. My arms hurt from coloring this in. I need a nap. Just leave me alone, please. Says blue crayon. Purple crayon is super confused. Ah, no one is decorating an egg. What is Easter without an egg? It's just not Easter. Like, what are you guys doing? Yes, we are. We are. Just you wait and see, purple crayon. Oh, now I get it. Oh, this is a genius idea. Okay, I get it. I was a little slow thinking. I shouldn't have doubted you guys. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, but where are we even gonna hide this thing? This thing is huge. Like I don't even know where to put it. Says Red Crayon. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, I got an idea. Says Blue Crayon. Happy Easter! <coughs> Enjoy your chocolate. Have a great day, kids. Bye. The Gecko and the Echo. By Rachel Bright and Jim Field, on a tropical island that rose from the seas, where the welcome was warm, on the coconut breeze, one little gecko, flamboyant, expressive, felt quite unique and extremely impressive. I'm Goldie the Great. Check me out. Drink it in. Hear me sing. Watch me dance. I can do anything. Some day, very soon, I will be a great star. I know if I practice that I will go far. So Goldie would prance and play to the crowd, singing songs out of tune and incredibly loud. It was twenty-four-seven. That mouth was never shut. Yes, Goldie was frankly a pain in the butt. At breakfast, guess who would be first to the mango, fandangling them all with a pushing in a tango. At nap time, young Goldie would sashay and croon, waking the tiniest geckos too soon. And under the moon, when the whole bay would dance. There would be hops to the front at every dance, day in and night out. Goldie just wouldn't stop, with no care where to tread, on the way to the top. Then, one fateful night, when the crickets were chirping, Goldie tried to make a tune out of burping. <coughs> 
The others decided this was the last straw. They just couldn't take Goldie's gifts anymore. Oh, enough! They implored. You're all me, 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 me. We don't want to listen. It's too much. Don't you see? Goldie was shocked, dumbfounded, and stunned. Greatness like this should never be shunned. They were just the wrong audience. That was a fact. It was time to go elsewhere to practice the act. So, with an indignant swish whip of a tail, Goldie flounced off the Red Canyon Trail. In the empty crevasse, a voice could ring out, belt out a tune, free a burp, have a shout. With a smile and a jump, Goldie let out a woo. But before the next hoo, <gasps> But no one was there, so who had wooed on the who? There wasn't room for two on this rock stage. Goldie tried singing a tra la 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 la, but got drowned out by the singing that bounced twice as far, tra la 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 la. And the song was not good; it was all out of tune. Who, Goldie thought, who is this buffoon? Be quiet, Goldie hollered. Be quiet, came the shouts. But then, ever so quietly, across the blue sky, some surprise inspiration came fluttering by. Hello there, it twinkled. I have an idea," whispering gently in young Goldie's ear. "That voice that you hear, it isn't a gecko. That shouting and singing, it's simply an echo." Ooh, "What?" spluttered Goldie. "That that that possibly can't be. What terrible wailing! That Rox was me." Well, Gordy was stumped. Could this really be true? If it was, then knowing this was urgent and new. The Coa said, "Greatness is not what you do, but how you're doing it that matters too." Gordy felt changed. A new day is dawning. I must hurry back to my family this morning. I want to return to my sparkly bay, and perform in a new, very different way. So at breakfast time now, Goldie says, "After you," with a slow waltz reverse to the back of the queue. When babies are tired and closing their eyes, Goldie hums soft, snoozy, hush lullabies, and under the moon. When they gather at night, Goldie just can't help it but groove in the limelight. But now those manoeuvres are mindful and kind for all those in front and all those behind, uniting all the geckos to dance and to sing, making them feel they could do anything. This was real stardom. Who would have thought? With fan clubs and fame of a much better sort. Yes, Goldie found out what true greatness can be, not just for one, but for you and for me. Whatever our journey, whichever our track, what we send out will always come echoing back. And so, if we know. That what we get, we give. And then giving out love is a great way to live. The end. 
I hope you enjoyed that story, boys and girls. I really enjoyed reading it to you. From myself, Roberta, to you, thank you for watching and goodbye. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Reading with Roberta. I'm Roberta, and today we are reading the story Octopants. That's a bit of a funny name for a story. This book is by Susie Senior and is illustrated by Claire Powell. Let's begin this story together and see what it is all about. Hey everyone, hey kids, I'm an octopus. But today, I am not a happy octopus. There's something you should know. I don't have any underpants. I'm nothing down below. I went to clam closet and tried to buy some octo pants. I tried all over the town. And you know what happened? Everybody just laughed at me. All the lobsters, all the fish, even the dolphins, they just laughed at me. They were so mean. And when I went into this other store, the owner, this seal, he was really mean. You know what he said? He said, Underpants for you? He said, Oh no, we don't have any. The problem seems to be your legs. You've got six too many. They were so mean because I have eight legs. You know, I'm an octopus. We have eight legs, eight tentacles. They were being mean and they told me, You have too many legs. You can't wear any any underpants. I was so sad because I wanted pants just like everybody else. But I didn't let that stop me. No, no, no. I am not a quitter. I am octopus and I am an optimist. I kept going. I tried to shop online. I went to eBay. I went to Amazon. I went everywhere. None. None octo pants for me. I tried to surf the net. I went on the internet. Didn't work. I couldn't find any octo pants. I found a card, free tuna, and my credit card got wet. All to find octo pants and I still couldn't find any. You know it. Sorry. It almost made me cry. There's pants for everyone except me. Look at everyone. Look at this turtle. Look at this fish. Look at this shark. Look at that eel, look at that jellyfish, look at all those fish. They all have pants. They all got colorful pants. They all brought one, they all went to the store, and they bought their own pants. And I don't have any. I'm the odd one out. I can't take it no more. I want a pair of pants. I wonder if you can help me. Because I've been trying, I've been trying for so long, and I can't get any pants. So I'm wondering if you can help me, boys and girls, if you can help me try and find a pair of pants. Please help me. Any help, I'll be so appreciative. Boys and girls, I have to tell you that your help has worked. Because one day, I found a place that I I'd never seen before. This place was called the Undersea Emporium. I, I hadn't heard of it. A seahorse hovered just inside this huge redolving door and she had great news. I, I cannot wait to tell you. And she said, when I went inside the store, this little seahorse said to me, Good morning. Can I help you, sir? Why don't you step inside my undersea emporium in the famous ocean wide? My face lit up. I just had this really big smile on my face. I know you haven't seen me smile throughout this story, but now you do because this is what I normally look like. Before I was trying to find pants, I was a happy octopus and I was back to my happy self because this little sweet, sweet seahorse really helped me. We have everything you could imagine at the Undersea Emporium. We sell bobbleheads for barnacles. You can get them real big fluffy. You can get them woolly. You can get them all different sizes. 
We sell evening wear for eels in case when you want to go out to town, you want to go out and get a fancy dinner, you can be all smart. We even sell onesies for urchins. Look, we sell this dinosaur one and a giraffe one. All types of prints. We sell loads. We even sell slippers, socks for seals. Because, you know, seals, they don't do much. So they just like to chill in their slippers and their socks. We sell all sorts. We have everything in store. We even sell jewelry for jellyfish. Just last week, we had this really rich lady come in, and she brought a bunch of pearls and necklaces and bracelets. She brought loads of stuff. She, she was loaded. She, she had a lot of money. We even sell water wings for whales, you know, like the armbands and the rubber rings for when the whales want to go out swimming. We sold a bunch of those. And we even sell, this is a new addition. We've only been selling this for a few months now, but it's selling like hotcakes. We even sell rainbow paint for rainbow trout to smarten up their scales. You know, when the trout want to, you know, get their dad's loan and they want to have that nice paint. We even sell that. We sell everything. Anything you're looking for, we're going to have. Now, seahorse, I know you say you sell clothes for everyone, but I've been going to a lot of stores and they don't have clothes for me. They don't make clothes for octopuses, people with eight legs, eight tentacles. So I'm really wondering, do you sell clothes for everyone before I get my hopes up? Yes. We sell clothes for everyone, octopus. Everyone. E-V-E-R-Y-O-N-E. -E. Everyone, including you, octopus. We sell clothes with spots and stripes and rockets pirate ships, sparkly bits, and lots of handy pockets. Now, let's get you some underwear, octopus. Let me just go into my cupboard and see what we've got. Hmm, not this, not this, not this pair. Oh, they're gonna be too small. They're gonna be too big. They're for babies. Not, actually, you know what, octopus? I think you've been misled. Perhaps you don't need octo pants, but something else instead. You know what? You're right. I've been looking at this all wrong. These legs weren't legs. These legs were arms and had been all along. All right, boys and girls. So, as you know, I've been on a very long, tiresome, emotional journey to find a pair of underpants. Spoiler alert, I still don't have any. But behind this curtain, I have a magical special reveal, and I want you to help me count down. So, on the count of three, I'm going to show you what's behind this curtain. Three, two... One. Oh, an octo vest. Yep, this is it. My red and white stripy octo vest. You know, I just thought, why get pants? Everyone's got them in the whole ocean. I want to get something different because it's cool to be different. Huh. Look at all the other sea animals looking at me. They're jealous. They don't have an octo vest like me. I love my octo vest. Thank you, boys and girls, for helping me find... No, not a pair of octo pants. My octo vest. I couldn't have done it without you, boys and girls. So, thank you. The end. That was the end of the story. Octo pants. And that was by Susie Senior and Claire Powell. I hope you enjoyed that story. I try to do some different voices for the seahorse and the octopus and hopefully that they worked and they were a little funny. Um, so I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and from myself, Roberta, to you, thank you for watching and goodbye for next time, another story time. Bye bye.
Hello boys and girls, it's me, Roberta, from Reading with Roberta, and today I have the storybook Clive Penguin, and this book is by Hugh Lewis Jones and Ben Sanders. Let's begin this story now and see what Clive Penguin is all about. Once upon a time, in a far away land of thick ice and white snow beneath a wondrous winter sky there lived a very happy penguin ha <laughs> oh please you've got to be joking oh, i'm absolutely freezing oh, i'm so tired of this it's always the same same old snow same old blooming penguins. Ugh. You know what? Some days I wish I was somewhere else. Like lying on a beach in a sunny hot place in a hammock drinking out of a coconut with the sun in the sky chatting with seagulls. I wish I could be doing that. Some days I wish I could be completely someone else, like wrapped up in a woolly scarf and with fluffy earmuffs, or wearing a sombrero and licking ice cream, or wearing a printed Hawaiian shirt with star sunglasses and a hat. I'd like to do that. Or you know what I'd really love to do? I'd love to wear a big pink fluffy unicorn suit, or I would really want to wear a spacesuit so I could go up to space and see Mars or Jupiter or Saturn or one of the other planets, anyone, I just want to go to space and see what's up there. Or I could dress up as a hot dog because I prefer hot dogs over burgers, they're way better. But no, every day I'm just blooming cold. Ugh. Look at all of us penguins just standing here together, all looking the same. I'm so tired of it. I've got a plan. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna get out of here. Goodbye! After struggling to climb up the iceberg, and a little assistance by Birdie, I finally get to the top of it. I stand there for a little bit. And I tell myself, there's something incredible. Just around the corner, no doubt about it, I'm a hundred percent certain great things are going to happen. Hey, check this whale out doing a really impressive flip in the ocean. Pretty cool. <gasps> oh, wait, wait a second. Is this really happening? Just look at that. Straight ahead. It's what I've always wanted! Eureka! My search is finally over! I have made an amazing discovery. So I slide down the whale's head Wee to get it before anybody else does. I have found an orange woolly hat what an epic discovery! Oh yeah, this is awesome! But I have to inform you, this isn't just any discovery. This is an extraordinary discovery. And this isn't just a regular hat. It's an epic hat. Sometimes I want to wear it on my head to keep my head nice and warm. Pretty unique. But some days I want to switch it up, and so I wear them as shorts. So fashionable! And sometimes I wear them as a t shirt. How versatile! And I don't know what Birdie's gotten himself into. He's trapped in a teapot. Seems like he didn't discover something as cool as me, but we roll with it. I have plenty to be guessing on with. 
After my extraordinary discovery, I go back to the rest of the penguins. They were probably missing me. Can you spot me in the crowds with all the penguins? <laughs> of course you can. Everyone can see me now in my orange woolly hat. It's just the perfect fit. I love it. And with all that, we all lived happily ever after. <laughs> just joking. With my woolly hat, I'm boiling. The end. That was the end of the story, Clive Penguin. That was a funny story. <laughs> uh, that book was by Hugh Lewis Jones and Ben Sanders. Uh, as always, I really enjoyed reading this story to you and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening and from me, Roberta, to you, good night. Bye-bye.